morning. Well, depending on what time you're, you know, listening to this, it's morning for me. <laughs> Hello, my friends, and thank you for tuning in to Weird Mythic Podcast with me, Naomi. I appreciate all of you for tuning in, and I hope, you know, well, it is Sunday for me, so I hope everybody had a great weekend, and I hope everybody has a great start to their week, their work week. I know I always go into Monday being like, I'm just going to kill it, have a great day. It's going to be a good week. So I hope everybody does also. I woke up all bright eyed and bushy tailed this morning. It's not even 1030 and I'm just now having my first cup of tea. Just got back from the farmer's market from getting all my produce for the week, which is really like, like the best thing about living in California or just Sacramento, Northern California, really. I'm sure it's the same on, you know, the coastal areas and in uh, Southern Cali, but I get fresh food every week and I just spent less than $40 to have my fruit and my veggies for the next few days, if not the next seven days. Cause I mean, you know, I'm going to go out to eat at least a few times. <laughs> so, uh, oh, I had an update. So you guys remember Lori Vallow, the doomsday cult murder mom. She did get life and was charged with all counts against her. I think that was about a week or so ago, maybe a week and a half. I listened to her final words, her final statement, and it was just so irritating how she was not taking responsibility, believing that what she did, what she didn't do, you know, like not reporting shit to the authorities like she should have or not have killed her. Anyways, I completely agree with the judge that she believes that she did absolutely nothing wrong. She has no remorse. She is 100% believing that with her religion, that murdering those people, including her, her children, is justified. Because she talks to them, uh, you know, in heaven, their, their other, you know, heavenly bodies. She talks to them. So she knows that they're all okay. It's just freaking wild. So she's doing life. And I think it's next year, like a year from like, yeah, this month. What is it? August? A year from now is when they're going to have Chad Daybell on the, or whatever. Chad is finally going to be on the stand for his part in the murders. So that'll be next year. But Lori is in prison for life. Uh, oh, I also had another update. Where is my phone? So remember how I was talking about the Grey Well in a few episodes ago and about the hauntings there. So somebody hit me up on Instagram. I'm going to it now so that I could give them all the credit. And yeah, where are Dylan Flood? I might might be pronouncing his name wrong, but Dylan hit me up and he was listening to the episode and he he's at the Gray Well Inn all the time. I didn't ask what he was doing there. I just went like, that's awesome. And it's pretty much saying that if I'm ever in, you know, Fort Bragg again, come up and he'll give us a tour. So I've definitely, it's Dylan, if you're listening, I'm bringing my brother and my my friend like we are all about this (laughs) so but he said that even though he's there every day he doesn't see anything but there's this vibe that is there for sure it's just an odd vibe and he does feel like things move in the corner of his eyes sometimes and he's always having to do like a double check is what it sounds like you know and he's heard like some sort of what sounds like conversations or people talking upstairs when he knows that nobody's up there. Never been touched while he was sleeping, but he has been woken up in the middle of the night for absolutely no reason, but just waking him up, which that happens to us sometimes. And he did send me a few videos and a few pictures of the Gray Well Inn. One of the videos that he sent me, it's like, I think it's a dumb waiter. He's showing me the inside of a dumb waiter and you do hear something that kind of sounds like a hell, you know, something like that. And he says it. He's like, I just took this video. Never had this happen before. Sounds like somebody saying help. And I listened to it multiple times. And I'm not an expert by any means. I don't know how audio exactly works, except for what I do for the show, which is just taking things out, putting things in, making things quieter. But anyways, there's something there. So I might post those onto the uh, Instagram at some point, but thank you, Dylan, for even offering to give me a tour of the Gray Well Inn. 
and sending me those pictures. It's really cool. They are doing some renovating there. So had to throw that in there. Thank you. Oh, and just an update. I'll have because I might forget on the next episode, but I'm going to go see Stone Temple Pilots and Smashing Pumpkins tomorrow night. And I'm so freaking excited. I'm taking my niece to her first concert. She's not 100% know who these bands are, but she does know some of the music and she is overly excited. We're going to have a great time. You know, I love me some live music. Like I said, I saw um, Tears for Fears last week and I'm going to go see us. Oh, I love STP, man. I'm so excited. So everybody, concert season is still in for another month or two. So make sure you go see those live bands. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into the episode for today. We have been discussing our I have been discussing Giants. We went to the Giants in West Virginia. All of the evidence that people over seven feet tall were in North America and lived with Native Americans. We talked about the offspring of angels and human women, which created the biblical Giants, the Nephilim. We also talked about Giants that fought the Greek gods and the gods who created those Giants and then fought them. And we also included that there's Norse gods, the Jotun. And now, and how those giants are a huge threat to Norse gods, just like the ones from Greece. But we as humans should probably also be scared of the Jatun because they might want to fight the gods again so that they can come to Earth. <laughs> so we've been all over the place with giants. I, I really enjoy looking at the giants in West Virginia and all of the skeletal evidence that there were these very tall people around. Now, I want to really get into more recent giants, more modern giants. And I'm going to start off with the TikTok guy. Now, I heard about this when it happened, but did not really look into it at all until recently when for some reason it's making its rounds back on the internet. And this was just the perfect time to cover it for the final episode of the Giant series. So went on to TikTok over a week ago and found Andrew Dawson. He's the guy who got on camera that footage of the giant on the mountains in Canada. Um, if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll put, po- I'm posting all, I'm posting his TikTok link into the show notes, but it really is him in a car. And it, it's like, so he's in a car. And this first video was posted April 9th, 2022. And it shows something very tall, what for sure to me, it looks like a giant human walking on the mountain. Andy, Andrew, he goes by Andy. Andy is in a car and it looks like, kind of sounds like he's actually the passenger in the car telling the driver to slow down at one point and the driver asking what, what is Andy seeing? Which Andy replies with a giant. Now we don't see any other video of the giant after that but it's all about the videos that came after. He posted a second video addressing how viral the first video went and how it is not a hoax. Then his third video where he's talking directly to the TikTok world about how he's gonna go look for it. He's gonna go to that location and see if he can't find something there. Then his fourth video where he is talking directly to the camera about how he went up to the mountain where he filmed the giant, like going to that location, but he got turned around by somebody saying that it's blocked and he can't go up there, which is really odd considering it's actually a public park and a public area. And the way he described it was a car. If it's completely blocked off and it's a public road, there's usually like a gate or something that they would have up. They wouldn't just have somebody parked there telling people to turn away normally, unless it was somebody in as a park ranger. Didn't sound like this was a park ranger. So the next day, April 13th, 2022, Andy gets up at like 5.30 in the morning to go to the spot where he filmed the first video. So like the first video when he's in the car. So he's going to go to that spot, see if he can't see anything from the road again. No joke. When Andy gets there, there is a bright lit up something. It's hovering over the mountain. It, it, I think it's legit and it's fucking wild, man. It's like, a beam, not a UAP, just this bright light. And it, it's like, it's like a, in a, a spherical shape, I guess. It's just a light coming down, kind of hovering above the mountain, right where that 
giant was seen. Now, later on that same day, Andy is filming what looks like two helicopters, like hovering in that same area where the light was and where the giant was. On one of the helicopters, there is a very large bag that is attached to the bottom of it, and it looks like they're extracting something. That same night on April 13th, I think he like put in three or four videos for the April 13th, but Andy is now taking his truck to the mountain, to the location where he filmed the giant. So remember in like that third video where he was saying how he was turned around, he's going to try that again, but he's actually going to film himself going up there. And that's what he does. He's going to go see what the hell is up there. And as Andy is driving up to that location, He is stopped by someone, which what looks like to me a Dodge Charger or a Dodge Challenger. My first thought was a Charger. Anyways, this car is on the side of the road. And then the man in this car comes up to Andy's car and tells him that the road is closed, that he cannot go up there or it would be trespassing. Now, this is late at night in a public park. Andy does say he doesn't understand why he can't drive onto there, like addresses it to the man. And the man just tells him to turn around. He's got to go home. So just strange. It looked like the men in black, if you ask me. So three days later, he films his knife video on TikTok. This video is of Andy. He's behind the camera and he's going to his ho- his window. He's at home. He's going to his window and showing that that same car that turned him around on that public road is now outside of his home. So he goes outside and asks, you know, who are you? Can I help you? What, why are you parked in front of my house? You hear the car turn on as soon as Andy like steps out that front door and just fucking takes off. Now, this is when things get really fucking strange. The 10th video is of Andy, but the phone, the phone camera is like on a tripod or propped up against something so that it shows all of Andy. You see it from his head to his toes. And after going through many of Andy's other videos on TikTok, This is completely out of the normal. He has never had this camera angle or view before. I think this is the only video actually that the camera has this type of like point of view of him. So he is standing there saying that these videos are fake, that they were scripted and that he is sorry. He also points out that he's just been really busy and he hasn't been able to upload any videos lately and it has been a few weeks. He posted this on May 6th, which was almost three weeks since that video of like the helicopters and the lightning and of the mountain came out. So it was three weeks that he posted this video of himself. But he also has his hands in his pockets the entire time. And it's just an odd way to stand. And he looks like he's kind of uncomfortable. And he is also looking off to his left often, looking kind of like he's looking at someone off camera. Andy does post another video 10 days later and says, quote, you might not see me post ever again. My videos weren't fake, unquote. Video just ends after that. So from the time he posted the video of the light beam and the helicopters, then it was three weeks later, May 6, 2022, where he posts the video of him like standing up saying that all the videos were a hoax. Then 10 days later, we have another video saying that you're never going to see me again. Then May 17th, 2022 is his last video. This is the 12th video of his giants. And what I would say, this is just a fucking men in black stalking him. I don't think he is talking in this video, but it's the same location where he filmed the first video and the fifth video. But now there is a strange building on top of the mountain. This building was never in any of the videos previously. So what the fuck is going on? Andy hasn't posted anything since May 17th, 2022. And this is a guy who is posting stuff constantly. Okay. Now you guys can go watch these videos. I'm going to come back to it. But I have the links in the show notes. You can watch all the videos, but just the progression of how he saw the giants, went searching for the giants and everything that stopped him. And the fact that you don't see it again, but there's all these things stopping him 
from even asking questions is very strange. I hope Andy, Andrew Dawson is safe and okay. And I hope his family is safe and okay. Cause we don't know. He hasn't posted anything in over a year. We, we haven't seen anything. And as I said, he was posting things constantly on his TikTok. So have his link in the show notes. Go check that out. Now for the rest of my research, these, a lot of this, in, a lot of this research came from documentaries and really the Guinness Book of World Records website. I want to cover real life giants, guys, the ones who are currently or recently live with us and that people of extraordinary height are still here. And we shouldn't just say that it's all myth and folklore. Like, of course, the ones that are 40 feet tall, I would say that's almost folklore. But again, you never fucking know. I'm going to talk about real giants, real people that have been with us here on Earth. And we have documentation of it, not just skeletal remains. I want to start with Robert Wadlow. He was born in 1918 and unfortunately passed away at the age of 22 in 1940. He was known as Alton Giant, which was the town he grew up in, or he was known as the Giant of Illinois. He was 8 foot 11 inches tall and weighed 439 pounds. Robert was diagnosed with hypertrophy, or hypertrophy, sorry if I mispronounced that, but it's hypertrophy of the pituitary gland. This produced a high level of human growth hormone in his body. And by the time Robert was eight years old, he was already taller than his dad. He had to have special desks made so he could sit comfortably at school and at home. He was eight foot four inches tall when he graduated high school. After graduation, Robert joined the Ringling Brothers Circus and was always in the center ring. Now, I just got to point out there, I love circus and I know it's probably not PC, but I love freak shows. I, I love the history behind it, the people. I am so like just curious about everything that goes on in their life and how they live their life, knowing that they are quote unquote freaks. So just got to say the fact that he was in center ring is huge. Not the fact that he was eight foot tall, but the Ringling Brothers were like, you're not a side show. You are a main show. You are center ring. That's awesome. Robert also got a gig with the International Shoe Company where they provided him with free shoes as long as he only wore their shoes. So he was like a walking billboard. When Robert passed away, it was due to an infection that started in his leg. Robert's coffin was 10 foot 9 inches long and 2 feet 6 inches deep and weighed over 1,000 pounds. There's a life-size statue of Robert Wadlow across from the Alton, Missouri Museum of History and Art. Eight foot 11 inches tall by the time he passed away at the age of 22. The Book of Guinness World Records currently has a new world's tallest woman. She is 26 years old and her name is Rumiesa Gelgi. She is Turkish and she is seven foot tall and growing. <laughs> maybe taller by now. <laughs> so she has a weaver syndrome, which is why she uses a wheelchair to get around. She can walk, but only short distances and she needs to have a walker. In 2002, Turkish Airlines made an area on their plane so that she could fit more comfortable so she could finally leave Turkey and visit the United States comfortably on their plane. She didn't fit anywhere. She's seven foot tall and has these giant legs like don't worry, I'll be posting pictures. <laughs> but Rimyesa is 26, um, very happy girl, and she is using her giganticism, this Weaver syndrome, to help others with the same syndrome or to just bring, you know, people with disabilities to the forefront that they need help, that we need to accommodate for them so that they can also live normal lives. But she's only the tallest living woman. There was also Sandy Allen, who I find absolutely fascinating, and I need to find another documentary on her, but she was seven foot seven inches tall. Sandy was born in 1955, passed away at the age of 53 in 2008. Sandy had a tumor on her pituitary gland, which made her growth hormone work triple time, pretty much like Robert Wadlow. 
She grew up in Shelbyville, Indiana. Sandy had surgery on her pituitary gland at age 22, which did help her with the problems that came with her giganticism. Giganticism. Might not be pronouncing that way, but that. (laughs) It was said that if she did not have the surgery, she would have continued to grow. She also had two surgeries on her legs to help her walk, and she always walked with a limp. Something that really stood out to me while looking into Sandy Allen was that she was very funny and had a great sense of humor. She said openly that she will not date any man shorter than her. Like she's seven foot seven woman. Oh my gosh. (laughs) She was on a few TV shows and radio shows, one of them actually being Howard Stern. And she was very open. We all know how Howard Stern is. She was very open about everything and talked about the fact that she is a virgin. And when Howard Stern asked about the size of her vagina, she replied with everything as proportion, which is why she's unable to use any tampons. (laughs) Sandy was in other movies. And there's this movie that I need to find. It's Italian art film with Donald Sutherland that came out in 1976. The name of the movie is Bellini's Casanova. As I said, I haven't seen it, but I did read a lot about it. Apparently in this movie, Donald Sutherland sees Sandy, her character, in like a bar and thinks she's very interesting and ends up going to her bedroom. And in this bedroom, there are two dwarves who end up bathing Sandy. And then it kind of looks, the camera goes to one of the dwarves and the dwarves winks and I haven't seen the movie, so we can use our imagination. I need to find that. Again, it's, what was it? Uh, Fellini's Casanova, 1976. (laughs) Sandy was only 19 years old when she got into the movie. And after that movie, that's when the Guinness Book of World Records officially named her the tallest woman in the world. Sandy also worked in Australia, where she did clothing promotions for department stores and eventually got a job at the Guinness Museum in Niagara Falls, Canada. While working there, Sandy got the opportunity to travel to Puerto Rico, Venezuela, Japan, and Thailand. Later in life, she did have to use a wheelchair to get around and ended up being bedridden. Sadly, she stopped taking care of herself and spent the last few years in a nursing home. There is a scholarship in her name at Shelbyville High School, And some of her personal belongings are in the Ripley Museum. Ripley's, believe it or not, do they still have that show? One of my favorite stories of Sandy was when she was in the nursing home and in the wheelchair. But she was caught multiple times escaping the nursing home and going down to the local bar. Was found at the bar a few times. She just wanted to go back to having a normal life and just go out and have fun. Like we all do, right? Yes, Sandy Allen. So I am 100% that person who Googles things right on the spot. And it's a lot of fun, especially since I like doing research and I just feel like, oh, I wonder what the fuck that means when I Google it. So some of my Googles this week was famous tall people. Now, when you Google famous tall people, the only thing that comes up is men. And the top three men, I'm not saying men as bad. I'm just like, there's more than just men that are tall, damn it. But the top three tallest men, like are who are alive (laughs) peter mayhew who played chewbacca now peter mayhew is seven foot three inches tall and of course we have shaq duh he is seven foot one inch tall and we have afro jack who is a dj which i've actually listened to his stuff i don't think i've ever seen a picture of the man though but i would like to see how big he looks with his dj set and he is six foot ten inches tall so i had then had to google famous tall women And you get so many different lists, like so many different lists, dude. But here is the top three that I found. My top three famous tall women is, of course, first one, Gwendolyn Christie, our own Brienne of Tarth from Game of Thrones. Ah, love that woman. She's also in uh, Wednesday. That's right. She played like the headmistress in the first season or something. But Gwendolyn Christie is six feet, three inches tall. We also have Maria Sharpova, the tennis player, and she is six foot two inches tall. That is the same height as a model, and her name is Carly Kloss, six foot two inches tall. They are the tallest women. I think, didn't I say that um, Sandy Allen was seven foot seven inches, right? Yeah, Sandy Allen's seven foot seven. So we don't have anyone 
at least in the Google world that I could find that is over Gwendolyn Christie's height, which is six foot three inches. So still don't have seven foot tall women that I could find in today's time, but they were out there. If not, they probably are out there somewhere. I wanted to kind of touch on gigantism. It is a rare condition that happens when a child has a high level growth hormone. It is treatable, but not curable. And it's better to start those treatments to help with the pain that comes with gigantism early in age. Normally, the pituitary gland creates a tumor that would lead to the condition. Without treatment or surgery, people with that type of tumor and gigantism will grow to be over eight feet tall. This does affect more males than does females and will shorten the lifespan of anybody with this tumor and with this condition. That's unfortunately why a lot of people have passed away before the age of 30 or even 50 years old that are gigant giants. There are only 100 known cases of gigantism recorded in the United States. Now, I want to talk about my favorite giant. Yes, not like the Iron Giant or anything like that, even though I freaking love that movie. <laughs> but my favorite giant, Andre the Giant, the eighth wonder of the world. Now, Andre was born in France in 1946. He did have gigantism. Andre was a middle child of two younger and two older siblings. Andre's dad was six foot tall and his grandpa was seven foot eight inches tall. So being tall was pretty normal for the family, but not at the exaggerated height as Andre. By the time that he was 12 years old, Andre was already six foot three inches tall. And after graduating high school, he started to work on his dad's farm where he could do the work of three men. And at the age of 18, he went to Paris to learn how to be a professional wrestler. And in 1966, his wrestling career took off. He toured the UK, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, and Africa. Andre went to Japan in 1971, worked for the International Wrestling Enterprise, began selling out the Montreal Forum in the 70s, starred in French boxing films. He went to, on TV shows like The Six Million Dollar Man, where he played Bigfoot. Of course, he was in everybody's favorite movie, you know, Princess Bride, where he played Fezzik, and he was in Conan the Destroyer with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Andre the Giant was in the WWF, World Wrestling Federation, which is now World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, and did a lot of other professionally res professional wrestling throughout the 80s. I watched his documentary, where I learned so fucking much about him from people who worked closely with him who loved him, his close friends, his family was there too. This documentary has interviews with his siblings. In the documentary, they explain that while Andre was in Europe, he went by the name Jean Fier, with Fieri, sorry, it's F-E-E-R-E. -E. <laughs> and this was after a French myth about a giant fairy. <laughs> that name was changed once he went to Canada and the United States and became Andre the Giant. They were like, we can't call him the giant fairy. He's going to just be Andre the Giant. <laughs> You can see in some of this old footage just how athletic Andre was when he was younger. And it is some of the coolest footage of him as a 20-year-old man in France at just 6 foot 10 inches. Now, speaking of his height, there seems to be some debate on how tall Andre actually was and how big he was. There are some people saying he was just 7 foot tall at 368 pounds. I think he was much bigger. Then we got people saying he was 7 foot 4 inches tall at 390 pounds. His shoe size differs too. He could have had a 22 size shoe or a 24 size shoe. Andre loved living in North Carolina and ended up buying a home there. When he passed away, he did leave it to his only daughter. Now, I'm not saying exactly where this place is in North Carolina or what his daughter's name is, but she is in the documentary for a very short moment. And it's really just because he wasn't that present of a dad. However, you do see that his daughter loved him, loves him, that they loved each other. She's very, very understanding of the lifestyle that he lived so that she could have the lifestyle that she currently has. You know, it's just one of those things that you learn later in life about how your parents did a lot so that you could have a better life. 
One of the reasons he loved North Carolina in this little town, and this is all coming from his friends, he was respected in this small town. He wasn't gawked at or pointed at. And it was really hard for him to have any sort of normalcy or privacy, especially in the public. He was recognized wherever he went. And sometimes it was a bad experience. Traveling for the WWF and professional wrestling, he went on planes and he went to a lot of hotels. The planes didn't fit him. He couldn't use bathrooms on very long flights flights like to Japan. He wouldn't fit. So the airline would actually put up a curtain across the entrance to the bathroom. He would then have to relieve himself into a bucket so that they could take the bucket, put it down the toilet and then flush it. It's just, it's so sad to think that you can't even have that. But he was, he was undefeated in all of his professional wrestling. He was in so many matches against so many wrestlers that we love today. Hulk Hogan was one of his very good friends, and they headlined at WrestleMania 3 together. And that is the only match that Andre lost in professional wrestling. During the time right before WrestleMania 3, Andre was on the way to retirement. He was in a lot of pain and had some surgeries. He was diagnosed much later in life with acromalgaly, which is a form of gigantism. This causes abnormal bone growth, though, not just like your whole body and organs growing, but your bones continue to grow. This gave him a much larger pronounced forehead, nose, and hands. There are interviews with his physician on this diagnosis. Andre started going to this physician for an ankle injury that wasn't getting better and just continued to cause him pain. Like... Wadlow. He had surgery on his ankle and his back right before WrestleMania 3. He was in so much pain and in the documentary you hear Hulk Hogan talk about how that last much they really catered to Andre to not hurt him. And you do see other footage of some of his later matches and it just breaks your heart. You could tell he's in pain. This documentary is just fucking amazing and I highly recommend everyone watch it. There are interviews with Hulk Hogan, Vince McMahon, Arnold Schwarzenegger, this man, Tim White, who was actually Andre's handler for years and years and years and was there for him during all of his career. We also get to hear from Ric Flair. (laughs) Listening to them talk about WrestleMania 3 and fights are amazing. All of them agree that Andre was hilarious and loved comedy. He thought it was hilarious to fart on people and just listening to multiple people talk about Andre the Giant fart had me busting up. I will mention that Andre liked to drink a lot and they they go over his drinking habits to where it was much over 100 beers and 30 bottles of wine easily to make him feel a buzz, you know? <laughs> and women. Women loved him and would flock to Andre the Giant. There are interviews from the cast of The Princess Bride. There is a story about how that last scene with Fezzik where he catches Princess Buttercup, Andre the Giant actually couldn't catch her. They had to put Robin Wright in wires so that she would float down easily and land in Andre's arms instead of her just jumping into them. That's how much pain he was in. This documentary made me cry and laugh. Andre the Giant passed away in France in 1993 at the age of 46. He was told he wouldn't live past the age of 40, okay? He got it to 46. Me and my brother and my mom quote The Princess Bride so much. Anybody want a peanut is our favorite thing to just randomly say. (laughs) Andre was also extremely proud of that movie and his character that he would like make his friends watch it with him and have watch parties. And he had made me laugh and so many others laugh because of that performance. And I want to personally say thank you to Andre the Giant for giving me that, that core memory, that staple in my childhood is The Princess Bride. And I still watch it to this day. 
When Andre the Giant passed away in 1993, at the age of 46, he was 7 foot 4 inches tall and weighed over 500 pounds. Now, just to go over the, you know, heights again of these giant people, we have Robert Wadlow, who is 8 foot 11 inches tall. We have Sandy Allen, who is 7 foot 7 inches tall. Then Andre the Giant, who is 7 foot 4 inches tall. And then we have Rumiesa Gelgi, who is seven foot tall and possibly still growing. Now, there are a lot of other people that I could fit into that list of, you know, tall giants. But that's a lot of six foot this. And I was like, nah, I want to go with seven foot over. So I did put some show notes. I did put some notes in my show notes about what is in each article. If anybody wants to check those out. I even put some stuff about people who I didn't cover. I loved this giant series and I hope you guys did too. You gotta let me know who your favorite giant is or was and let me know your thoughts on the Andrew Dawson videos. Did he capture a giant on camera and are the men in black after him? Because my thoughts are honestly all about that one video of him standing up and looking off to his left He was somebody that posted frequently on TikTok. And after that video, there are only two. And that was posted on 5-16-2022, the You May Not See Me Anymore video. And then uh, May, sorry, May 17th, 2022 instead of 5-16, sorry. (laughs) May last year, 2022 are his last two videos. (laughs) And I think he saw something. I believe those videos. I think that Big Brother is trying to stop it. But you know what? Big Brother did just come out and validated the rest of us saying that UAPs and aliens are fucking real and have been visiting Earth. So might just be a matter of time to when they t- tell us about giants and Bigfoot. You tell me. Send me your thoughts. <laughs> go to all of my social media. Go to Weird Mythic Podcast on Twitter. Go to Weird Mythic Podcast on Instagram. Go to the link tree. I put it in my show notes also, finally. I don't know why I didn't have that in there before, but I just put up some new um, designs on our on my merch store, so go check those out. Go to Weird Mythic Podcast on YouTube, and I've been putting stuff up on TikTok, which is just Weird Mythic. And please, 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 I am begging. I want some personal stories. I don't have any. This is my 70th episode, and I would love somebody to send me a personal encounter, or a suggestion on a show, send that to weirdmythicpodcast at gmail.com. Again, thank you for tuning in to Weird Mythic and send me those stories at weirdmythicpodcast at gmail.com. Bye. 